Just a really quick announcement before we get going. Our popular Basics 2020 learning package update has been released. It contains an ebook, video tutorials, a Revit template, and an exercise project. Basics is the most fun and efficient way to learn Revit. Download the package at revitpr.com basics or check the link in the description below. Understanding Revit's weird coordinate system. There are three different coordinate origin points in Revit. The first is the project base point. It is used internally in relation to the building. It is also used to set the angle difference between the true north and project north. The survey point is often used to create a shared coordinate system. It is placed in relation to a real world site element, such as the intersection of two property lines or a geodetic marker. Finally, the internal origin. This is the tricky one. By default, it is invisible and cannot be moved. Most users don't even know it exists. By default, importing and exporting files will be made in relation to this point. First, let's turn on the visibility of all the points. Go to the visibility graphics menu by using shortcut VG. Scroll down to find the side category. Collapse the menu and activate project base point and survey point. Now we gotta find the internal origin of the project. Select the project base point and make sure it is unclipped by clicking on this icon until there is a red line. Then right click the project base point and select move to startup location. The project base point will now be in the exact same position as the invisible internal origin of the project. To make sure you always keep sight of the internal origin, create two reference planes at the intersection of the point. The reference planes tool is located in the architecture tab. Create a new subcategory and call it internal origin. Pick the aligning lines pattern and the color of your choice. Create the reference planes at the intersection. Make sure to pin the reference planes. The coordinate origin points also have a z-value position. Go to the elevation view. Go to the visibility graphics menu to make the base points visible. We're going to move the base points to experiment. As you can see, the level values match the distance to the project base point. Setting levels elevation base. Select one of the level and click on edit type. In the elevation base parameter, you have access to two options, project base point and survey point. If you switch to survey point, you can see that the levels now refer to the distance from the survey point. Typically, this option would be used if you want levels to refer to the sea level instead of a building point using spot elevation. In the annotate tab, you will find the spot elevation tool. This tool will give the vertical distance between a point and one of the origin point. There are a few types available. If you select project base point, the spot elevation will indicate the distance to the project base point. Repeat the same test using the internal origin type, then the survey point type. If you move the survey point, you can see the value in that specific spot elevation will be modified. Same thing happens when you move the project base point. Using spot coordinates. If you go to a plan view, you have access to the spot coordinates tool, which is also located in the annotate tab. This allows you to indicate the north-south and east-west coordinates distance to one of the origin points. Like with the spot elevation tool, you can use a different type for each of the origin point. In this example, we will create a different spot coordinates for each point. If you try to move one of the origin points, you can see that the matching spot coordinates values are modified. To set the coordinate origin, click on the spot coordinate and click on edit type. If you scroll down, you will find the coordinate origin parameter. You have three options available. In your Revit template, you should have a type for each of these origin ready to be used. Moving the coordinate points can be a little complicated. First, you have to understand the effect of the clip. The project base point and survey point each have a little clip icon next to them. When moved, the effect will be different depending on if the clip is activated or not. Moving a clip project base point is usually not very useful because you will move the entire project except the survey point. If you really want to move the project base point, you probably should unclip it first. Then it can be moved individually without moving anything else. Make sure to pin the point when you are done moving it. This way, the point can't be moved by mistake. 
When it comes to the survey point, you should always keep it clipped. When a clipped survey point is moved, you can see that the values indicated here will always be zero. If you unclip the survey point and move it, you will see that the values change. That is very bad and confusing for you. If you try to use the spot coordinate tool set to the survey point, it won't point to the survey point itself, but to the original position of the survey point before you unclipped and moved it. That's because by default, the survey point is set to an invisible point called the shared site origin. This point is used when creating a shared coordinate system. To avoid confusion, make sure the values next to the survey point are equal to zero. Then, keep the survey point clipped. By default, you should always keep the project base point, the survey point, and the internal origin together. Pin all the points to avoid moving them by mistake. In your Revit template, it is also a good idea to add a red text annotation to indicate the position of the internal origin. This way, users are less likely to create the project far away from the origin. Setting True North The True North represents the real world north based on site conditions. To set the True North value, duplicate the Level 1 floor plan. Call it Level 1 True North. In the original view, select the project base point and unpin it. You will find the angle to true north parameter. Click on the blue text and enter the angle value. In this view, the project doesn't seem to be affected. That's because the orientation parameter of the view is set to project north. Switch to the true north view you've just created. In the orientation parameter, select the true north option. As you can see, the project now appears to be rotated, matching the angle you've set in the project base point. Exporting to CAD. We will now explore how the coordinate system behaves when you export from Revit to CAD. In the File tab, export to CAD format, then click on DWG. Click on the three small dots to modify the export settings. Go to the Units and Coordinates tab. You have two choices, Project Internal and Shared. First, we will try using the Project Internal setting. Click on OK to complete the export process. Then, we will export another file using the same view but this time we will use the shared settings. When you open the first file in AutoCAD using the project internal export settings, you can see that the 00CAD origin matches the Revit internal origin. When you open the DWG export that uses the shared settings, you can see that the file uses the survey point as the origin. The view will always be exported using the True North setting. You can see that the project has a rotation that matches the angle you've previously set. Be careful, if you move an unclipped survey point, the origin will be matching the original position of the survey point before you unclipped and moved it. Another reason to never unclip the survey point. To recap, Revit can use the internal origin or the survey point when exporting to CAD. The project base point is never used when exporting. Linking CAD files. We will now explore the coordinate options when linking a CAD file. Go to the Insert tab and click on Link CAD. In this example, the DWG file we pick is a simple cross with a center position at the CAD origin. In the Positioning menu, you have multiple options. First, we'll use the Origin to Origin option. In this case, the CAD origin will perfectly match the Revit internal origin. We will try linking the same CAD file again, but this time we will use the Shared Coordinates Positioning option. You will receive a warning that you can ignore for the moment. This time, the cross not only matches the survey point, but it also acquires the rotation value to match the True North. If you switch to the view that is set to True North, you can see that the cross now appears to be orthogonal. Again, be careful when using the survey point. In this test, we will try to unclip and move the survey point. When linking the same CAD file, it won't be positioned at the survey point, but at the original position of the survey point. Before you unclipped and moved it, you can set it back to the original location by selecting the survey point and entering zero values in the north-south and east-west coordinates. Clip and pin the point. Linking Revit files. There is a lot of positioning options when linking Revit files together. The choice shouldn't be complicated. Just use the origin to origin option the file's internal origins will be matched together. In this example, we link a structural model. The project is positioned exactly at the right place. In the most recent Revit 2020.1 update, the project base point and survey point of the link will be displayed in gray. 
This is the first video in our series about Rivet's coordinate system. We've got an epic video about shared sites and shared coordinates that will be released very soon. Subscribe to the channel to know when it becomes available.